The Mentality Show is made possible by Dash X Radio, the Voice of Reason channel, and my man, you all know who he is, Mr. Zoe Williams. Welcome to Mentality, a motivational, purpose-driven, mindfulness tool set to produce the best you can be. Mentality is for one and all. The cutting edge technique used for designing the way forward to improving yourself personally, socially, and physically. The process is simple. Tune in to the show, start listening, and bring out the best in you. On the app at mentality.biz, just choose a desired session, start listening, and watch the good things happen. Feel free to save your favorite sessions to play in order of preference. The Mentality Show is designed to address real-world matters, and topics will include virtually all things encountered in day-to-day life. The sessions include, but are not limited to, relationships, as it deals with family, love, friends, and more, self-improvement, personally and professionally, business enhancement, success strategies for a way forward, positive mental attitude, your happiness, better health, sleep enhancement, addictions, anxiety, stress, depression, grief, and much more. So it's our pleasure to introduce the Mentality Show and help bring out the best in you. The app will have these and similar sessions for you to choose from with new topics added all the time. Just note, all sessions are recommended to be played 21 days of listening for best results. You're listening to The Mentality Show with your host, J. Abdul Thomas, on Dash X Radio, the Voice of Reason channel, curated by Mr. Zoe Williams. Greetings of peace and welcome, one and all, to this maiden voyage of The Mentality Show. We are here to serve and help to bring out the best in you with mentality mindfulness. It's my pleasure to be here and to explain to you what we do. And what we do is find the mental key to whatever mental lock exists in the lives of our people. Now, a lock doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing, such as the case of a professional who does good, but that lock stands in the way of him or her doing great. In this case, we want to enhance a thing, not necessarily do away with the thing. In other instances, for sure, the lock could be negative in nature, and we find keys to unlock a person from this too. As we dialogue, feel free to leave word or call with comments at 800-555-1212. A little bit about myself. I am a doctor of business administration, a corporate coach, a life coach, a certified master of neuro-linguistic programming, known as NLP, an entrepreneur. And therefore, I believe in building something from nothing. Most of the time, I can be found building on the next idea and that which follows. Building is my first, second, third job, as well as my hobby. I build or help relationships, be it brotherhoods, sister and brotherhoods, couples, businesses, be it owners and employees, schools, children through youth, to adult alliances. Mentality works with mentally challenged aid and intervention systems, to name a few. 
I work with NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. And as it states, the linguistic programming for the neural speech processes to help the mind. It's a practice that has been approved by the American Medical Association since the 50s to first deal with war veterans having the PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorders. And it grew to what it is today on the cutting edge as we use here, a process which brings out the best in you. I bring all this up to say that me personally, I'm here to serve. While building on one of my companies, I had the pleasure of meeting Zoe Williams through a partner. That partner was Coach Anthony Eggleton. We all started building together and years later, here we are. During this program, we will discuss real topics relating to the listeners and conduct interviews with the guests, have a topic of the day, and have a call-in or email session to let your thoughts be heard and addressed. What we will do is not talk so much as take action, because we can surely agree in some aspects there's great need for a call to action these days, wherever you turn. We will use proven methods to help people move the mind, to solve and resolve issues, better ourselves, and reach our full potential. Our system is called mentality mindfulness, and it works with the individual to bring out their best. Let's distinguish mentality mindfulness from mindfulness. Mindfulness is a process that incorporates methods to, amongst other things, relieve stress and help to increase focus. It shows one how to exhale, to still the mind, to relax, and to meditate. Mentality mindfulness moves the mind as well. Think of the exhale as it relates to relaxing. When we inhale, we're taking a deep breath before jumping in, or in other words, taking action. The two, inhale and exhale, can and will occupy the same space. We breathe in and we exhale out. And in fact, both inhale and exhale are essential to the balance of the self. More on this in a moment. Now, by extension, mindfulness is about focus using consciousness, a part of the mind, 10% of the mind to be exact. Mentality mindfulness is about using all of the mind, which includes the other 90% of the mind, the subconscious. Tapping into 90% of the mind opens great potential for people in countless ways. In many cases, we have to offer then we have way more than we can imagine. We can realize accomplishments that can change our lives for the better. Think of exercise routines. Many fitness trainers like to use two body parts, a push exercise like the chest, for example, which involves pressing a push. The other body part is a pull exercise like the back, which involves rows, which is a pull. The two exercises in one workout routine gives the body a balance of proportion. Now, in the same regard, incorporating the subconscious mind gives mental balance and we call it mentality. And the way we go to the gym to get a body in shape, mentality is the gym to keep the mind in shape. We want our heads in the same shape that we want our bodies. And that's needed to exercise mentality mindfulness from the 10%, the conscious, 
is to turn on the sessions of mentality on your cell phone, your laptop, or your computer each day. As for the subconscious, it only needs to listen and it gets the job done. Now, mentality mindfulness speaks to the subconscious in proportion of the amount of the mind the subconscious occupies, which is 90%. What's best, there are no side effects, people. A noteworthy benefit, especially for those times when medication just doesn't feel like the answer. It's worth noting that most success is led by the mental. The old adage, mind over matter, is more than just a notion. Most success is mental. So if the conscious is 10% of the mind, and that's what a person uses, then a person could be up to 90% better off by adding in that massive subconscious. We will look to cover more on this aspect, especially the parts of the subconscious and how the cutting edge tool of activating those parts of the mind gives rise to enhancement. We will begin taking action with enhancing the self, known as personal enhancement, then move on to share that enhancement with others for the better of the people as a whole. We'll get into the addictions and how it can make its own symptoms, even phantom pains when craving and how to beat them. Mentality is a phenomenal tool, people, to enhance brain function as many will experience and others will give personal accounts to the success they have with this tool. Mentality serves as a mental antibiotic to stave off stinking thinking, and other funky things. Mentality will serve as a tune-up to get and keep that edge, that sharpness. In some cases, it will serve as a way when there seems to be no way. Some will find mentality to be a focus, function, and action-based tool. It helps remove unwanted behavior and thoughts. As we speak, I recall a case and the person stuttered a lot. When asked if the relationship at home was rocky, they denied it vehemently. When they were given a long session, they later said that the stuttering started at home. Not prying, the cause was verbal abuse at home. Stuttering was the subconscious way of having them avoid arguments. So that part of the person's subconscious was given new objectives and the stuttering went away. Now, mentality will help a person bring out and maintain good actions, character, and conduct. In this way, it's an action tool. It's a tool for anyone at any age. I get asked a lot, how young can someone be for mentality to work? Well, I had a friend with a three-year-old daughter They were visiting from Atlanta and related how close she and her daughter came to getting removed from the plane for the little girls crying. So using mentality, I designed a fairy tale session for her. On the way back to Atlanta, the little girl got nervous when it was boarding time. Mom placed the headphones on the daughter with the session. A few minutes passed and the daughter said, Mommy, I am ready to fly now. I got a picture later of the daughter sleeping the whole flight to Atlanta. And a year later, they traveled to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They got another picture to me with the caption, the session is still working. And mother and daughter have yet to be kicked off a plane. The relationship love sessions are powerful and more are coming. We all agree that we need love and we could use more love nowadays. Sessions address the preparation for a relationship, the moments in the relationship, and even coping when the relationship ends. The business enhancement and success sessions are also available. There is where NLP and the business practitioner comes together for the win. Business people and entrepreneurs alike benefit from these sessions as they move the mind to the positive business results the subscriber seeks to attain. 
Now, these results can be within an employment scenario or an entrepreneurial scenario, self-employed, business owner scenario, or whatever have you. Our focus in these sessions will get individuals to tap into their better part of the moral self, to make positive decisions, be it relations in public or personal. Having one session named the Integrity Code says lots about the course of action you will take when the mentality system is applied. For those joining, again, this is the Mentality Show. I am your host, Jay. At this time, people, I take great pleasure and honor in sharing a bright light with the audience. This interview is near and dear to my heart as the woman I introduce to you has defined the term change agent to the letter and the spirit. She is an international figure who elects to fly under the radar, though being a true heavyweight in her professional space. She is a mother, sister, friend to the end. She is Khalila Bashar, information technology leader from Silicon Valley, working with a prominent cloud service company, the top cloud storage company, in fact. Ms. Bashar has worked at the highest levels in the banking and finance world, then moved into the tech space some years ago where she ran her own company. As an African-American, she is profound. She is a minority in the tech world. However, she is well-respected and well-known. Ms. Bashar and Mentality came together for a couple of reasons. We'll get into that organically during the interview. So without further delay, I welcome Khalila Bashar to Mentality Show. Great to have you grace our show. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, Ms. Bashar. Please share with us who you are in the tech world, the place you call your business space, your business playground. Well, I'm originally from uh, New York, upstate New York, and uh, my family and I at one point moved to Chicago, and I also had the pleasure of living in Atlanta for a number of years, and then I ended up um, moving out here to California uh, with a job that I was actually uh, on as a, a, a contractor, and um, so I was blessed to receive an offer to be relocated out here. And so, um, and now I'm here today. Well, again, truly a pleasure. How did you get into tech, Ms. Bashar? I originally started in accounting. When I was in high school, um, I had a wonderful accounting teacher and um, I had the love for numbers. And um, so I received a scholarship uh, at my own university um, in, in that f particular field. And after the first two years, I decided that um, uh, this just wasn't me doing the whole number crunching thing. And instead of starting over again, I uh, changed my degree, uh, my concentration, my field of concentration to finance. And so I graduated with a finance degree and I did finance for a number of years. Um, uh, being in the banking industry, and um, and I worked at a number of company as a financial uh, analyst, and then one day um, I was asked to come in and interview for a um, a, a, a de developer job, and um, and I was concerned. I was like, well, I don't have any um, IT skills, and didn't know how I would actually do as a developer, and. The individual told me, well, don't worry about it. We could train you. We just want, you know, people that have that background as far as um, uh, working with the clients and understanding um, their needs. And that was about maybe uh, 20, 20 years ago. And here I am today uh, working at a, a company as a uh, IT manager supporting um, a commission um, software system. And I have 10 direct, report, direct reports under me. And um, things are pretty good. 
Oh, fantastic. Now, these direct reports, I think that uh, knowing you a little bit, I would say, are these 10 direct reports here in America or do you have an international component to uh, the quote unquote management, which is much, much more than management that you do? Please actually, explain. Yeah, actually, my uh, 10 direct reports are in India, Bangalore, India. Uh, the beauty today is that you don't have to be in the same office location to ma manage individuals. And what's nice about the whole setup is that um, it allowed me to be flexible in my time. It allows me the opportunity to work remote. And um, uh, actually, we have Zoom and Skype and, you know, we get to see each other. And then I don't really only travel once out the year to go to the uh, office in India to meet them in person. So it works out quite well. Fantastic. Do you work with any other components in other places in the world? Um, when you say components. Uh, other areas of the business. Oh, uh, yeah. So um, because um, the company that I'm currently employed at is an international company, it's, you know, uh, some of my counter people are in, in um, uh, Cork. Cork being? Uh, Cork, Ireland. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, uh, Costa Rica and um, um, Asia Pacific and um, being, um, um, we call them APJ. It's yeah. like, yeah, um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. It's it's all over, all over the map. Um, we are a successful company. I'm pretty much like, if you name it, we have an office uh, location in that particular area. Do you have anything in the uh... Europe, any place like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. In um, um, Bulgaria? Yeah, Bulgaria. And um, sorry, just so London many. as well, yeah, right? London, you got it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's pretty much like, you know, uh, you, you have your fingers on the pulse in a lot of places around the world, hence your international flair. Yes. Yeah? yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I, I really appreciate that because... Um, you bring a worldview, and um, as a as opposed to uh, anything else, you bring a worldview, and therefore you are a woman of the world, which is very very important. And you're also um, an African American, uh, as an African American in the tech world, and as a female in the tech world, you find yourself as a minority, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, that being said. Could you express any of the insights that you have in that particular area? Well, the only challenge with being an African-American um, woman of color, but also have the age, also have the religious background because I'm a Muslim. And so I have a couple of other factors that kind of um, make me who I am. And so... Um, the one thing I can say is that um, the way things were 10 years ago versus today is really totally different. You know, I feel more free to be me and um, the respect that I receive isn't about those factors that I just listed. But 10 years ago, they were factors and I had to always feel like I had to always be under the radar and, you know, just be careful you know, uh, what I say and, you know, who I approach. But today, it, it, the blessing is that things have totally changed. And I can say that for the first time in a long time, that I love what, I, what I'm what i doing, how I can do it, and how people see me as a person. Okay. So you mentioned that, um, that today the level of respect that you have, uh, what does that stem from? Um, actually, from my uh, from my subordinates, the people that um, work under me, um, they never look at me as being anything but their manager to the point that it's like a family environment. They know and they trust me and the people that I manage uh, have been with me, uh, you know, at the company I'm at now uh, for the seven years that I've been here and uh, built a bond, built a trust, and, and, and that means a lot because they never question, 
you know, things that I ask them to do to try to get them to the next level. They just know that I have their best interest, interest at heart. And so it's really nice being able to work with that type of understanding. Okay. Well, what about your superiors? Oh, and so as far as my superior, it's, it's also a, a different, nice relationship. Um, because I don't look at them as like, okay, um, I have to be this certain way or do this. They want me to, to display who I am and do more of that. And they respect that. And so that's a change for me as well. Uh, I went through a recent management change and, uh, I was worried about it because, um, I had a, a, a relationship, a friendship with the uh, previous manager, but it was more in a relaxed environment. And then the new manager come in and she actually challenged me and she gave my light, I mean, my job, a whole different light that's very exciting for me. It's like I got a brand new job. I got a whole new start over and I could do it and be me and display the skills that people didn't know that exist in me. So that's, that's a change for me as well. I've heard it said that um, as you move toward the top of the pyramid, the people that travel in the circle near the top mostly interact and know each other. Uh, how do you find that in the tech world? Well, when you say the top of the pyramid. Um, when you move towards the top, there's less space and the players become very familiar with each other. Yes. How do you find that? Uh, how does that factor in for you? You're, you're, you're known in the tech world. And do you find that um, there's very little degree of separation between if someone mentions your name in the tech world, uh, is it hard for others to say, oh, yeah, I know her. I've worked with her. And, you know, uh, the, your reputation precedes you, so to speak. So uh, things have changed uh, um, around that type of setting as well, because um, uh, about three years ago, uh, the, the group that I work in started having summits. Uh, for senior managers. And this allowed the senior managers to get together, mingle, uh, share their ideals. We have workshops, we, um, we have award, certain, uh, award ceremonies, and it's really nice because now you get to know these people and they're just like you, everybody's on the same level. The title goes away. So the CEO, the VP or whatever, they're not looked upon that. I could like walk up to them and we could have a conversation and, and uh, we could talk about work. We could talk about our, you know, personal life. And so that barrier no longer exists, you know, I, I, at least for me now, mm -hmm. whereas, you know, three years ago, I, you would say my name and they were like, well, who is that? Or, right. You know what I mean? Right. Now, I, they know me personally. And when they see me, like literally they speak, they embrace me. I'm like, I don't see that title anymore. Right. Beautiful. Because that was, uh, that was, um, my segue into, uh, uh, any barrier breaking accomplishments that you feel as though, um, uh, have been made yeah. uh, that you've either experienced personally or you observe, you've observed from uh, a distance. So, okay. So, um, all these things lead up to, um, the way in which individuals, uh, frame themselves in a particular area. And by extension, um, we've come together on several levels. One in particular being uh, the topic of this show, mentality mindfulness. And I wanted to ask you, how has mentality factored into your equation? So I remember when um, we first met um, a little bit over eight years ago, and um, I had this habit of eating Mike and Ike's. 
And, um, <laughs> and you said to me, you said, Hey, I can give you an induction on that. And so when you first said it, the first thing that came to my, my mind was like, okay, hypnosis, I'm really not into that. And, and you're just like, no, this isn't like, you know, me controlling your mind and, um, and, um, uh, um, so, um, you said, no, you just, I have this app that I'm developing called mentality and you know it has some, a few segments and I actually have one on that and so you said just try it I you know I guarantee you that um you would be impressed so I said okay all right I'll give it a try and the next thing I know I'm no longer craving Mike and Ike's and here it is eight years later I have not had the desire to have not one Mike and Ike and that is a true testimony that it works. I mean, I was literally eating these things every day. They substitute for me chewing gum and it became an addiction. The sugar, because you know, Mike and Ike is full of sugar. And the next morning after I listened to Mentality, I did not have that desire to have that Mike and Ike. Beautiful, beautiful. And and you know, I, I, I appreciate that because the way you, a person does anything is the way they do everything. And at the heart of the matter, I believe that it's about being able to, um, again, embrace the better part of ourselves and develop the mentality to bring that out for the best in us. And uh, you exemplify that uh, in more ways by mistake than I could ever list on purpose. And something as small as a Mike and Nike, be that as it may, it has a lot of sugar and over a period of time, things get compounded. And um, I think that, you know, you being able to uh, bring out the best in you where having that self-control over that sugar habit is a, a hats off moment to you. And it's all about you. Uh, mentality is just a roadmap and you're behind the wheel. And, uh, um, you know, we appreciate that. And I congratulate you again for eight years of success in that particular area. And closing, my pleasure. And closing, is there anything that you would like to share? Yeah, the one thing that, you know, people have to understand you first have to want to change. And if that want is there, then adding mentality and equation will definitely work. So you have to put the work in. You can't just listen to it once and walk away. But if you do the things that's required, you'll be in the position that I'm in today and and sharing this testimony. And, and, and doing what needs to be done is just turning it on and, and letting it play. Exactly. I was playing it in my sleep. Yeah. You know, with the subconscious listening to it. And so it's it doesn't take any time out of your day, your daily life. It's very simple. And here I am today, not one Mike and Ike after eight years. There it is there because the subconscious never sleeps. You can play it and it, and it, it gets the message across. Exactly. So, uh, um, a thousand thanks, Miss Khalila Bashar. Thank you. Thank you. Much success, continued success. Um, I hope to see you at the top when I get there. And um, um, we're here for you. And you know, we, we thank you for coming in and just being able to impact us with your success story, personally, professionally, and mentality. And... Um, and my parting words to you is just continue to keep it mental and be a beautiful light. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, that was truly a pleasure, that interview with um, Ms. Bashar. And people, if mentality is good for those who push the physical human limits beyond expectations, as with the athletes that we work with, and mentality is good for those who push the intellectual limits beyond expectations in the tech world as a minority, um, as Ms. Bashar is, then mentality is good for other lifestyle demands as well. 
We will be sure to explore these aspects here on Mentality Show each week. Just to inform our listeners that this is the Mentality Show on Dash X Radio on the Voice of Reason channel, curated by the genius of Zoe Williams. Now, at this time, we have another special piece to add for our listeners. This is what I call an overall well-being short session, and I present this to our listeners, and we'll explain that this short session is a taste of the sweet nectar that mentality provides for us. So just relax and get ready. We're going to put on something nice that is geared to bringing out the general best in one and all. As you begin, get comfortable and prepare to take a ride to the bright side. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And again, inhale and exhale and imagine five people looking at the same plot of ground. A farmer thinks What can this soil produce? An artist thinks, what colors and contours would I use to paint this scene? A realtor considers how to subdivide it and what bulldozing and pop laying will be necessary. A city assessor figures the tax basis and a fellow who played baseball here as a child is filled with memories. Each person selects from their own view, from the same outer environment, what their inner attitude directs. Each gets what they want to get from the same plot of ground. In precisely the same way, You look at your life path and future in terms of your attitude and you imagine two travelers looking at a long road, a winding path through many passes which rises to a far and distant mountaintop. One Traveler imagines the mountaintop as a dark mountain with shadows, dangerous dips, dizzying heights, deadly drops, saying to themselves, I can't make it. They don't venture out and even if they did, their chances of success for reaching the top of the mountain are slim. Another sees the road as the narrow ribbon of light leading them slowly up to the top of the mountain. They avoid scary imaginings to focus on the next step ahead. All is visible and clear with a happy and positive thought which they say to themselves, every next step of the way will show up with equal clarity when I actually get to it. And probably it will. They will deliberately start the trip and eventually reach their goal. Risks are known, yet they tell themselves with the first step, I will succeed. 
as they journey with full capacities exerted toward reaching the mountaintop. One sets up failure symbols, the other success symbols. Both types of symbols are there as the shadow and the sun, the depth and height, failure and success are scattered along everyone's road of life. Your inner attitude as you face the road determines what you perceive. The way you look at a great challenge below a connecting plant determines if you fall off or you get across or you fly above and you will soar high above. So repeat to yourself, I am competent. I am worthwhile. I am perfectly myself. Thereby empowering yourself to overcome all challenges. All right. Hope you all enjoyed this session. It's a taste of what we will offer each week during our show. And for more, download the Mentality app on your Apple device or your Android device. Just go to mentality.biz. That's M-E-N-T-A-L-I-T-Y dot B-I-Z. And download the premium version Next to your name, write Zoe in order to recognize who and where you heard of the app. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, let's open up the lines for questions and answers. Our first caller is Ms. T. Ms. T, thanks for calling. How are you? I'm doing great today. Great, great. How can we help you on the Mentology Show? on my, my 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 experience with having the mentality and having everything you know having everything in line about what I previously went through before so what was great about this whole process is that there's some things that you don't even realize that you're doing and it's brought to light and you're able to fix it you're able to fix yourself I mean, you, you fix yourself on the outside, but now it's time to fix yourself on the inside. Exactly. I like to use the term, uh, get your mind in the shape that you want your body in. Yes. Yes. So, so talk to us, Miss T. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like the, the hardest thing a person can do is to self-diagnose themselves. So they feel like they're on the outside, that, you know, they're doing the best thing they can, everything is great. I mean, it takes, you know, someone from the outside to point out there are certain things that you can tweak about yourself. And then once you get those things tweaked, you know, you can, you know, help align yourself to like a better person, to be the better person, you know, you can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I like to use the example. I remember years ago, I, I had my first fitness trainer and I went to him. I said, I want a big chest. And he said to me, when you go to the doctor, do you tell him what to do or do you let the doctor do his job and, and then everything comes out right? He said, I'm going to tell you what you need. Don't tell me what I need. So, so much, like you said, for self-diagnosis, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this process for me has been wonderful because there's certain things, you know, I just wanted to change about myself and, you know, you know, I thought that, you know, certain aspects of myself were okay, but realized I had more anger issues than I really thought. I thought I was a, you know, a nice person that everyone, you know, got along with me, but all of a sudden I realized that I do have some, you know, certain ang anger issues and, and all this, this whole process for me has been a real true lifesaver because, you know, I just really want to make sure that I'm, I'm a, a better me. And that's incredible because, you know, uh a lot of times we perceive ourselves as nice people. Uh, there may be moments in which uh, <laughs> there's gaps in that and nobody knows we're nice but ourselves, right? Um, 
and that then that's an important thing you know to be able to uh like you said in the process there's times in which things uh, uh come out that we don't even know are, are there and then uh we get a chance to look at it at a at a at a very different angle and with a different lens a very clear lens and uh, allow the good things to happen for us, even on a level in the, that we didn't know could happen for us as well. And also this process for me is not only has it been beneficial for me, but for my daughter as well, who is just the happiest child that you could ever imagine. But she does have issues with flight cla- um, claustrophobia and as flying. And going through the process with her, I mean, there's times that I've gone on flights and I thought I would end up on the news because we were going to get off the because my child, my child was, you know, about to run up and down the, uh, the aisle talking about she doesn't want to get strapped in and she doesn't want to, you know, be in enclosed spaces. And when I tell you, I, you know, this whole mentality for her has switched over a new life because, I mean, now she doesn't have that fear that she had before. I mean, her, you know. She doesn't have that blockage that she had before, and she's an excellent flyer now. Matter of fact, at five years old, she tells me she wants to be a, a, a um, uh, she wants to fly planes now. That's a wonderful thing too, and you know, here here's a, you know you really hit on something really really strong. Um, you said that a fear of flying uh, is what somebody can have, but. By extension, the fear of flying, like you stated, could come from individuals being claustrophobic. So like you mentioned before, hey, you know that, you know, you're one way and then you discover other things about yourself. So a person could have a fear of flying. It's not only because the plane is in the sky, but maybe also they're claustrophobic. They don't like to be in closed, enclosed places. And that Ms. T is like, you know, I, I can't think enough because that opens up a lot of the perspectives to the identity of what we do at mentality and how it works organically with the individual being able to tap into the inner self, that subconscious, that other 90% that runs the opportunity of making them 90% better. More things are revealed and therefore more, uh, keys can be found to unlock these pieces of our personality that are there in one shape, way, form, or fashion. Yeah, that, that, Ms. T, I got to thank you for that because, you know, you, you know, the, the listeners out there, this is a great thing for us to, you know, uh, take and, um, ponder on. Yes, and I'm, I'm just so thankful, not just for myself, but, you know, uh, having a daughter who was so, you know, fearful. I mean, that, that was really hurtful. So to be able to remove that blockage for her has been one of the the single most things that I can sit and say, like, wow, it, it, it truly was something that was holding her back, and now she just wants to soar, soar along with it. So that claustrophobia is now gone, and she loves to fly now. So. And, you know, I, I'm not sure where the claustrophobia com- comes from. I mean, at, at age four and five, I mean, you don't know where people can come up with certain things. But to be able to move those, to remove those barriers, to be able to move, you know, remove, you know, what's holding us back is truly, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's truly mind-blowing. True, true uh, you know, true words couldn't be spoken. And in, in the Testament, I think, uh, I think, um, at, at the end of the day, being able to go on from afraid to fly, finding that not only is the fear of flying, this claustrophobia, to wanting to become a pilot is what it's all about when we say bringing out the best in you. Not running from things, but running through things and taking the tiger by the tail and owning your destiny. Uh, Miss T, really, truly helping you know, conquer some fear. Miss T, you you really put that thing down in a few minutes, and you know i I can't I can't thank you enough for calling in. I can't thank oh, you I enough. I can't thank you all enough for you know 
to open up my eyes to something that, you know, was closed before, but now it's wide open to me. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we are here to serve, you know, and mentality is for the win, for one and all. All right, Ms. T, uh, we thank you a thousand thanks, and we hope to hear from you again. Call in any time and tune into the show. Tell a friend. Mentality I'm show. Life, I'm a lifelong, you know, subscriber now, lifelong. Yeah, and the important thing, too, that we want to mention, how many how many sessions did it take? Uh, I believe it was two sessions, but the, the follow-up was just a touch-up, which Probably really wasn't needed, but wanted. Right. So the main thing is we get in and get with, get out. We don't stretch it or anything like that. And what's called on the person is just to listen. That's all. Just just put it on. Just listen. All right, Miss T. We thank you so kindly, and we'll talk again. Oh, thank you. Thank all you right. for listening. All right. All the best. This time in the show, we'd like to do what will become known as the mentality moment. It's filled with sayings, thoughts, a little history, an anecdote, short story, something for us to walk with to the next time. And we're going to open up with the lion and the fox. The lion being the king of the jungle and the fox being the fox. Once upon a time, there's a lion in the jungle he went hunting, and he took with him the tiger. They brought down a kill, and they drug it back to the lion's den. They laid the kill in between, lion on one side, the fox on the other, or the tiger on the other. And the lion said, okay, Mr. Tiger, what do you think you should have? He said, well, I'm just as big as you. I deserve half. Lion took his half, gave the tiger half, the lion ate his half, the tiger ate his half, then the lion ate the tiger. The next day, the lion went out with the cheetah, brought down the kill, brought it back to the lion's den. Mr. Cheetah, what do you think you should have? Well, I want half because I'm faster than you and I'm tired to kill out. So the lion gave the cheetah half, the lion took half, the lion ate his, the cheetah ate his, and the lion ate the cheetah. The next day, the lion goes out with the fox. The fox does a crazy skit, gets the attention of the kill. The lion brings the kill down and they bring it back to the lion's den. Okay, Mr. Fox, what do you think you should have? Mr. Fox says to Mr. Lion, whatever you think I should have. The lion takes the lion's share, gives the fox a small piece. The lion eats his, the fox eats his. Then the lion looks at the fox and says, you live to eat and hunt another day. Moral of the story, we must use our heads stay mental people be sure to tune in next week when we will take questions from the audience and start to cut deep into the business of building the better person in you this is jay extending the big thanks to one and all as you go through your days be sure to do one thing every hour and every minute and that is keeping it mental peace out